And now we're here delivering what we think is the best solution to you guys. All right, so you know, do this. Um, this is kind of mainly aimed towards our uh, judges. Uh, the biggest problem that this uh, this has is that these for the bike share program to be approved, it needs the city council's vote. And so, like that, that's really just our, our huge problem right now is that without the city council on board, this is never going to happen. So, we're going to do a little bit of pretending, and you guys are going to pretend like you are Conway's city council. And at the end, if you think we, uh, we adequately have assessed the problem, brought our answer, and if it's a good one, then you guys can give us a yes, a no, uh, let's, let's push it back to do some more reworking. So. Yeah, and you all have a, I think, a district ward on there, so that comes in handy a little bit later. Maybe is that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Sure. All right, so we just wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about our problem. So, of all the teams, ours had the least amount of information about it. This is like just getting started. Uh, it's kind of an initiative from the city of Conway, and so there wasn't a lot of information about it. They've met with a few people, but really we're just working for the ground up. Um, and so working through our problem, we realized that for us, in order to get a bike share program installed in Conway, we really need to convince the council that this is a necessary thing for Conway. And so that's why we came up with this as our problem statement. Yeah, here comes our challenge statements that how might we demonstrate to the citizen of Conway and the city council review that a bike share can worsen the cost and the beneficial to connect in the community. So, uh, we, I don't know if you guys know what bike sharing is. I mean, I came into this and I knew, but not everybody in our group did, and so we're going to explain that to you guys. So what is bike sharing? And we're going to actually kind of specifically look at Zagster, which is one of the companies that the city of Conway has been kind of interviewing and talking to about potentially partnering with for this. Um, so the way that bike sharing kind of works on a whole is that you, if we're going to talk about this third generation bike sharing, which is what, we, what Zagster is, is going to be, you're going to come to a station, you're either going to check in or you have a membership and you come to, up to one of these docks at the station here and you have your app and you get either your key or your PIN number or whatever to unlock your bike and 
you get a bike for the day. That's just as easy as it can be. And so you can transport yourself from point A to point B. You can get from work to get lunch. You can get from lunch back to work. Um, and so that is kind of the like most simple form of a bike share. Zagster is really cool because they, instead of <clears throat> coming in with these huge kiosks that you might see at like City Bike, it's just the like very core of what it is. You just need a bike and you need a rack. And so they have, that's really what they provide, is they provide these really cool Zagster bikes that are different than these right here. So they've got the lower top bar, so it's a lot easier for anybody of any skill level to ride their bike. And they're very durable, which is great for bikes that are available to the community. Um, and then they also just have their racks that you park them at, which we will get to where they'll be located in a little bit. Um, and then a lock, and that's it. And you have your app, and it's just a very simple, quick process. Okay, um, now when checking out if a plan is practical, the first factor we think about is the consumers will accept our ideas out by the program or think it is worth it to spend their money on our project. So now let's talk about our target audience on the program. Um, firstly, we create two representative models to define our um, target audience. One is called the Lily. Um, um, 25 age to um, 45 age woman. She is a member of people who really wants this program. Why? Because she feels like um, saving money by using a bicycle, I mean safety city bicycle instead of buying a real expensive mountain bike and she also talks about the environment because she wants to lead a healthy and a green life using the city bike. Um, she, yes, she does have a car to drive in case of some emergency such as the bad weather or being late but she prefers to take a ride because she really enjoys take a ride under a blue sky and sunshine. So then, um, here comes our another um, target audience. Uh, he is a man who is, uh, I mean, 25 to 40 years old, having a minimum wage job. I, uh, I think um, saving money by using the city bike is very important for him because um, actually he can only afford one car in his family and his wife really needs it because her workplace is far away from his, his house. Um, so I think if he can use the city bike to get anywhere he wants in a shorter time, there could be more option for him to choose for his work so that he can fit his family better and have a way to get out of poverty. So after um, identifying our two models, it's much easier for us to answer the question, who will be our project for? We define our target audience into two, group, two groups according to the stories of Lily and Stan. Um, re Lily represents a group of people who are um, environmentally friendly and um, want to lead a healthy life and green life by taking a city bike instead of buying a real expensive mountain bike. So, and um, uh, stands, I mean, another man represent a group of people who are low uh, socioeconomic and or live without a car, just like us, international students. <laughs> so, of course, there's no doubt for them that having a city bike will save a lot of money. In a short city bike, I mean the bike share program provides people a chance of leading a better life. So, obviously we would like to convince you guys, the city council, that the city of Conway is deserving of a bike share system. So, I'm pretty sure your first thought would be, where? Where is this going to go in Conway? And that's what we want to address. And so we have this nice little printed out map here, but we also want to first address what is Conway look like. Um, I myself am a cyclist and so is Matthew, so we get to commute all around the city. And um, it's actually a really great city for it. So, uh, the city of Conway 
was just recently re-upped on their status as a bicycle friendly community by the League of American Bicyclists. So it's been just recognized that it is a bicycle friendly town. It has the amenities and it has the infrastructure that we need to be able to do it so safely. And um, as you can see, we have over 20 miles of bike lanes that have been actually identified with lanes. And we have over 40 miles of sharrows, which I don't know if everybody knows what those mean, but it's a share the road sign. So it just means that the car and the bike might not have an actual designated lane, but it, there's a sign that says so. Um, and we also have the really successful Tucker Creek Trail that's been just finished up, which is three and a half miles long. Provides a really great source of recreational walking and biking for people and families in the town. Um, and so, next, um, the only way that a bicycle, infra uh, bicycle share system in Conway can work is if we work in the densest areas of town. Um, putting it out in the, in, way out here next to where the airport is, it's just not going to make any sense. Um, so we kind of identified the densest areas of Conway. You can check out here our four boards that you guys all represent if you want to try and you know, see which one you match up to. Um, so we kind of first look at, if you don't know, go to the next slide. The four red ones are kind of our parks stations, which are these ones right here. That there's a connecting trail. They kind of go along the Tucker, Tree, Tucker Creek Trail. Excuse me. Um, and then another couple of places we want to identify. We want to identify the schools on, in Conway. Uh, we have Hendrix, NBCA, and CBC. You got college students. They don't always have cars. As, we, as uh, Sawyer said, we have international students. Giving them a way to be mobile around town is incredibly important. So we want to give them a station there. We have the Conway Commons, where there's a lot of economic activity. Getting people there, and it's also near a trailer park, so you're giving people in the lower socioeconomic division of society an ability to transport themselves from home to work to shop, just getting themselves an ability to be mobile. We also then have the Dave Ward Walmart, same situation here, so that lower socioeconomic people are able to get there because it's connected to the Tucker Creek Trail. Um, we have also Axiom and HP. Those are two big businesses here in town, and we just feel the need to be able to equip them with a station so that they can get their business people or they can get their employees into the downtown corridor during lunchtime, during the peak hours of the day that is going to be bringing more business in. Um, and also, we have this really cool idea of doing sponsorship, sponsorships with the uh, bigger businesses. So HP or Axiom, they can even choose to basically sponsor a station at their uh, at their work office and uh, it would be incredibly beneficial to the city to have that cost taken off. Um, excuse me, losing my train of thought here. Last one we would be identified in downtown. The downtown corridor has probably the most foot traffic that we see in all of Conway and you got foot traffic, it's conducive to bicycle traffic as well because it means there's lacking car traffic and that gets people out on the streets. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing you probably are wondering, what are the benefits of this? So I'll go through them real quick, just and we'll get more detail in a second. But first, it boosts the economy, then there are health benefits, increased ridership, equal opportunity mobility, connecting communities, and the first step to mass transit within Conway. So, you guys get to listen to me again. Um, the first thing first is that, as I was commenting earlier, it boosts the economy. It might not seem like it at first because it might feel like it's pulling away and it's just going to be an added uh, added fund to the city's budget. But overall, bike sharing is the lowest cost per mile public transportation option. Um, we don't have any form of public transportation, mass transit here in Conway, and this would be that first step. And this would totally boost the economic activity in downtown, in my personal opinion. You get people down in downtown off or out of their cars, on their feet, on two wheels, it becomes a human scale experience and they are able to actually engage with their community. They are able to walk past, or bike past, excuse me, you know, somewhere like Mike's Place or, you know, um, Bob's Diner, and you, they can see, hey look, there's bingo going on, I want to go participate, and that helps stimulate the economy here in town. It brings jobs, it brings, and bringing jobs and bringing just an overall quality of life here makes people want to move to Conway. Um, so, 
again, my mention of the human scale, this means that cyclists will frequently stop to shop, they're going to investigate and discover just the city. I feel like a lot of people in Conway don't actually know their city, and that's an important meant being an engaged citizen um, with their community. And the other great benefit, as hopefully everybody knows, is that biking is good for you. It leads a healthy lifestyle. You're going to have improved cardiovascular health. You're going to have decreased body fat levels, decreased stress levels, increased joint mobility. Um, it makes you a happier person. I can attest to that. Um, you just you can't really be mad when you're on a bike, and can't really, yeah, you can't be mad. <laughs> All right, so a big thing that I feel like you as a city council probably are worrying about is the fact that in these last five years, you guys have spent a lot of money on making Conway a bike-friendly community. You've spent all this money putting all these bike lanes in these roads, and what have you got? You've gotten lots of cars, uh, car drivers saying, man, why did my tax money go to these bike lanes for the 200 or so like spandex wearers who ride their specialized bikes that go really fast? That's, not, that's helping 200 people and it costs a lot of money. So what does the bike share program really do? It increases ridership. It can bring, what, what's the stat? 80% of people after the program came into the, their town said they were more likely to get on a bike and ride around. So for Conway, with 50,000 people in it, around, you know, throwing numbers loosely, rather than having 200 spandex wearing people zooming around, you might have 1,500, 2,000, 2,500 people using these parts of the road. And the, yeah, uh, go back. Um, the increased ridership, what it can do is for the roads. You think, well, we spent all this money on these roads. What do cars do to the roads? Cars add lots of stress onto the roads. Um, and we have to pay a lot of money every year for our highway department to go through and fix potholes and cracks and all sorts of stuff that cars cause. What does a 200 pound bike with a 200 pound person on it cause? Not very much. I could ride. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. Probably like 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I put lead in my bike to work out. Um, so uh, yeah, so just the increased ridership and I, is a per yeah, this is a perfect way to bring that ridership numbers that I know the city council and honestly a lot of people really just want within the city because they paid so much money for this awesome title. Um, the next thing is equal opportunity mobility. It's a big deal for a lot of people in Conway um, in the lower economic status that they, they might not have a car to make it to work or if they do have a car it breaks down a lot, it's not reliable and so they're really stuck within like a probably mile, mile and a half radius of where they can have a job because if they can't walk to it and they're not for sure going to get there. With a city bike program, city, yeah, city bike, uh, shared bike program, they can go to these bike kiosks or uh, docks, I think they're called within Zaxter, get a bike, go across town. You can make it probably five miles easily in like 30 minutes. And that's as not a very skilled rider. Like you can just, you can make that happen. Um, and also it brings, there's a lot of stigma when it comes to riding bikes. Whenever you see somebody on a much nicer bike, then you're gonna be like, oh, you know, they're, they're rich or whatever. Um, but then you'll see someone on like a Walmart bike and people tend to look down on them. I don't understand that stigma. I think that just someone's out on a bike is awesome. But with these Zaxter bikes that all look the same, they all, they're all pretty sleek, honestly, too. I would ride one. Um, everybody's going to be riding the same bike. So there's not going to be any, oh, look at them riding their cheap armor bike. It's going to be, oh, look at them riding that sweet Zaxter bike. It's going to create this equal opportunity that it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're a little bit down in the luck. You're going to feel good riding it. You're going to look good. You're going to be healthy. And it's going to be good for our roads. Um, another thing Emily kind of touched on is connecting the community, community. Something that I do, I drive my car a lot around town as well as bike. Whenever I'm driving my car, I'm not connected. I'm listening to music, you know, chanting, or I'm like talking on the phone, or like just not even paying attention, just driving. But whenever I'm on a bike, 
I'm really paying attention. I'm really becoming connected within my community. You ride through downtown, you'll see all sorts of people walking. You'll smile, nod your head at them, you know, wave. You might see the flea market downtown. But you know what? I haven't been to a flea market lately. Let me stop and go look at this flea market. And something that we didn't necessarily touch on with the economic uh, stuff is that when you save money on biking, that's more money in your pocket. And when there's more money in your pocket that's not going to gas, you're spending it within the community. You're going out to eat more, and you're, you're doing things within the community that really just make you feel more connected. So, another big thing is that Conway does not have any mass transit. Like, UCA has like six shuttles for UCA students. And I think they have like private taxis or something like that. It's also for students, but I, I don't know what all that's about. Um, but the community doesn't really have anything for just the normal person. Um, and within this graph, you can see that from 1983 to 2009, that biking has increased as a secondary form of uh, uh, transportation. You can, you can see, you'd be like, what, 2%? What's that mean? 98% of people drive their cars, all right? Like, that's just how it is. <laughs> but within cities, you have this crazy increase of these people being like, you know what, I'm gonna ride my bike rather than taking a bus. Or I'm gonna ride my bike rather than taking a subway. And guess what? Conway doesn't even have a subway or a bus, so we have nothing. But bike sharing, super cheap, well, relative, relatively to the buses and subways and stuff like that, is cheap. And it is becoming extremely popular within our culture of today. All right, and we're actually low on time, but I'm going to keep going because I want to finish this. So if we're disqualified, that's what we have more time. Cool. Uh, so my question is barriers. You guys are on the city council. You've seen the benefits. So you're probably raising some questions in your mind right now. So I'm going to kind of clarify some of those. The first is infrastructure. So maybe there's a lack of signage. Signage is a really easy way to get the community involved. And it also like increases safety and just awareness of cyclists. Um, quality of the roads. Conway is spending a lot of time and effort um, making sure they're a bike-friendly city. So by including this bike sharing program, you're building on that investment that you've already made. Um, and then there is some scarceness about multi-lane roads.